Franco, one of the, the biggest challenges facing you as, as a coach could be in this side and the six nations? No, I think the biggest thing is to you know, get to know everybody as quickly as possible. Um, get out there and explain more or less how I see things and um, you know, to also be very aware of the continuity that's necessary, um, not to, to throw everything at them from the start, at the players at the, from the start. And uh, um, yeah, it's a short period to prepare, and a short period to prepare. Oh, so you, 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 Okay. Um, no, ovviamente una squadra che, che io non, non voglio subito dire davanti a tutti come siamo perché c'è un po' di sorpresa perché credo il nostro, conta a nostro favore il fatto che non tutti sanno cosa devono aspettare per quello um, cerchiamo ovviamente di prendere una DNA nostra più prima possibile um, ovviamente come appena detto è una periodo molto breve per, per mettere tutto a posto così cerchiamo anche di, di sfruttare dalla continuità della Coppa Mondo. Sì. Sì, eh, Sergio veramente eh, ha fatto un gran lavoro, era sempre eh, un leader speciale a Rack in Italia, ha fatto ovviamente cinque Coppa del Mondo, eh, veramente un complimento anche per qualsiasi giocatore che ha giocato così tanto. Eh, lui eh, è veramente uno, uno, eh, una persona, un esempio per i ragazzi che giocano adesso e quando lui sarà coinvolto al fine de, delle sei nazioni e per, per dare il suo ultimo spinto in questo movimento italiano dare il suo, suo massimo per far vincere la squadra e non solo un adeo lui viene veramente di contribuire per l'ultima parte per l'ultima volta eh, in la maglia azzurra Yeah, I think there will be a lot of continuity. Uh, I don't. I think Wayne is very smart in the way he goes about things. He does. He has. He spent five years in Wales himself. I mean, there's a reason why they've uh, they've linked him off to Warren. So it's going to be, I think, a lot of a, again a big physical challenge. Uh, but I do think they'll bring a little bit of an attacking edge. I think World Rugby's leading. <laughs> leaning a little bit more towards uh, a little bit more of st- uh, uh, ball and hand approach uh, going into the 2023 20- World Cup. So um, I'm definitely the style that uh, Wayne's played in the Scarlets will be, at the Scarlets will be noticeable in the new approach. Do you think that might make it a good time to play in the fact that might be trying to implement a new style and how they would go and expect a few bumps in the road and they the new heroes? Uh, look, I'm not, I'm not going to walk into that trap. Um, it is true that, that uh, there is change. We also have change, and uh, yeah, there will be bumps in the road. But uh, is it? Ev- I don't think it's ever easy to play Wales in the Millennium Stadium. Doesn't matter. And you know, after after the performance um, into the semi-finals of the World Cup, it's going to be a proud team running out there um, for the first game in the Six Nations. So we expect them to be as tough as ever. Can I ask you about Jay Fletcher? Obviously, you said you're preset and you have one final swan song, but certainly Jay looks like you'll be a go-to man, um, certainly as a ball carrier. Can you explain to me you're talking about this quality? What makes him so special as a ball carrier? Yeah, obviously, I think if you follow the Gloucester's performance and the way, uh, now he was be, he's been out for a bit, but uh, the last couple of weeks, the way he's gone around the park with the ball in hand is, is exceptional. He's a very explosive player. He's very good in front of the contact and in the contact. And um, yes, he's a, he's a also a very good defender and he plays quite to the ball, which means that he will bring something. But 
hopefully you know there's going to be a little bit of change in the approach from all the loose forwards in our in our, in our system so uh, it's going to be a nice challenge for all of them to work hard to get into um, the new or the plan almost say the new plan the plan that we have to go forward Frank, yeah Sergio will Sergio will form part of the last of, of the last part of a campaign um, for a number of reasons first of all um, a lot of people would think that it's a uh, it's a last an opportunity for him to say goodbye but it's not the approach our approach is he also said it that he he wants to come and contribute for last time so we expect and uh, and the challenge is out there for him to come and be as best he can be for one last time and and in the Italian jersey so it's not just a we here to say goodbye attitude that he's, he's following it's obviously he wants to come and have a, a very good last game and contribute as much as he can to um, to leave that last footprint that's needed and the example uh, set up to now to just back that up. Okay, just a quick question Italian possible. Do you believe the player from the youth and experience can have a shift? Do you want to respond to Italian? Okay. Um, sì, sicuramente ci sono tanti che hanno cambiato subito le sue squadre verso i giovani, verso il gruppo diciamo 23, eh, 2023. Noi, io penso dove il rugby in Italia è adesso, dove abbiamo bisogno anche le esperienze da quello che hanno giocato nei scorsi quattro anni, il gruppo che sono andato a Coppola Mondo eh, scorso anno hanno avuto tante esperienze ma ci sono anche qualche giovani che nell'ultimo paio di anni eh, Italia Under 20 hanno già mostrato loro hanno l'abilità di, eh, di vincere anche partite importanti per quello qualche giocatore loro deve essere anche coinvolto nel nostro processo ma per adesso dobbiamo avere la miglior squadra uh, per questa sfida di sanazione a disposizione e quello deve essere da lì dobbiamo trovare il bilancio tra esperienza e ovvi- ovviamente con questi nuovi giocatori che, che magari può far parte Ci siamo ritrovati dopo appunto un primo raduno un paio di settimane fa e già con le idee un po' chiare su quello che andremo a fare e un gruppo come diceva Franco è composto da giocatori d'esperienza ma tanti giocatori giovani che hanno portato eh, orgoglio, entusiasmo, vivacità all'interno del gruppo e comunque è ciò che ci serviva, veniamo da, anche dalle franchigie comunque da un periodo abbastanza positivo quindi questa è un'aria positiva che viene portata anche all'interno dell'ambiente della nazionale, siamo entusiasti del nuovo lavoro e c'è qualche novità per cui questo porta molta fiducia e confidenza in noi stessi e sì, adesso abbiamo un paio di settimane o meno per preparare questa prima partita e ogni giorno dobbiamo sfruttarlo al massimo per rimagazzinare ciò che ci viene proposto, ritrovarlo, farlo nostro per iniziare a competere in questo grande torneo. Di Giosa ha parlato della necessità generale di rialzare il livello tecnico di questo torneo sugli standard degli altri tornei. Quindi in 25 anni, perché l'ultima stagione eh, ha detto che è un resto molto molto basso. Quanto l'Italia potrà finalmente contribuire a questa ricrescita del livello generale del sei sport? Sì, ovviamente di dire quanto è difficile, perché non è difficile da misurare quello, ma... Uh, sicuramente io come Edi ha detto e siamo, sono d'accordo con lui um, il, il scorso anno abbiamo visto squadra in preparazione per la Coppa del Mondo in un torneo e durante il torneo tu, giochi una, tu avrai un gioco completamente diverso dal di solito per quello um, adesso come lui dice giustamente c'è quattro nuovi allenatori con Eric e, e Gregor che sono già gioc- allenatori che pensano un po' diverso sul gioco um, questa è l'opportunità nei prossimi quattro anni di alzare il livello e di, 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 di sfruttare delle, delle, delle atleti che abbiamo io penso atleticamente i giocatori di rugby possono ancora crescere tanto e quello è, è una cosa specifica credo noi in Italia dobbiamo lavorare
two years ago um, in Rome, you it had been very close to being installed in the two point eight three nine twenty seven level by the score. Um how much are you looking forward to having us another chance to do that this year given that you both stop in round three? Is that a question to me? Okay, um, I'll go first and then I'll give uh, look a, a, a chance. Um, yeah, obviously, uh, every game is important for us. I think yeah, a lot of people would think that Scotland and Italy is maybe teams that every, every time come close and there's opportunity for a for an upset, if I can call it that. Um, we wouldn't like to focus just on, on on Scotland. We would like to start this campaign and first of all follow the new processes that's been put in place. Second of all is to um, find our DNA and play to our strengths first. So that's going to be the first part of the objective in this competition. I think there's a lot of good good work done uh, through the Conor O'Shea era that we can just uh, bounce on. Um, so for us to aim just at the sides like Scotland uh, would be a uh, would be misinterpretation of, of what we're trying to do. We would uh, we need now to, to, to install these new processes and follow that to, to see if we can't be at our best as quickly as possible. Yeah, sure. We all will play our game for win. That's true. And uh, yeah, we are building our confidence in the new process and uh, we are want to be the best that we can be and uh, this is our goal for these six nations. What's your point of view about the, the French national team? Yeah, obviously, um, I had the privilege of coaching against them when I was with South Africa in 2017 and um, I know what the French team is about but also with a lot of new um, ideas coming in from Fabian, will make a big difference. A lot of young players um, now getting a chance. We know that the French in their 20s in the last two or three World Cups were basically unbeaten, very st strong in what they did. So this, that is their gener this generation coming through. So we expect a, a very determined group of players. We expect uh, a, a lot of liberty in, in play, but also with uh, with, uh, with Sean Edwards being there that to help the defence, it's going to be very direct and a lot of physical stuff which were not usually seen by the, the French players. So we expect really a, a very competitive um, ball in hand approach, but also a very a physical defence approach. Diciamo in termini generali o per una nazione in particolare? Per i cinque centri Diciamo che ogni squadra ha ovviamente dei giocatori chiave che la rappresentano e con un'influenza particolare. E per cui ripeto ogni squadra ha un giocatore forse non solo uno però più giocatori importanti Johnny Sexton e per la Francia sono molto come dire vedere il discorso della, della nuova prima linea, i nuovi giocatori, quindi Camille, Schatt, il talonatore e anche Julien Marchand che rientra da un infortunio importante e la leadership di Alwin Jones nei confronti del Galles è indiscussa e Owen Farrell per l'Inghilterra senza ombra di dubbio. E la Scozia Scozia giocare contro le francesi scozzesi è sempre molto emozionante, è un pack, un pack molto duro, e, però Stuart Hogg in questo momento, anche il grado di capitani che gli sono stati assegnati e per il modo in cui gioca in questo momento, sì, assolutamente un leader. Franco, we, we don't get many South Africans coaching national teams in the Six Nations. Can you give me your own impression? From the outside of what you made of the tournament all over the years and what South African perspective you hope to bring to the campaign? 
Yeah, look, I grew up with the Five Nations first. It was always a huge uh, thing in South Africa. You know, that was our point of reference for a long time. And when it, once it became Six Nations and 20 years ago now, um, obviously the, the, the it, it was the trendsetters in, in the way World Rugby was approaching the new uh, law changes and there was always something um, something special about the, uh, the environment the, the climate conditions climate conditions that influence the game so there's a there's a lot of things that we took back in South Africa and looked at and developed our game around um, to be competitive especially at the end of the year tours that we often had to come down and learn the hard way over here um, I think this tournament um, with the help of the very competitive uh, domestic competitions that's around has developed players and um, coaches in a, such an extraordinary way that that they are the trendsetters at this stage um, in world rugby. So for us, from a South African point of view, or from, from me from a South African point of view, um, uh, and from my experience from Super Rugby, it's uh, it's important to, to find maybe a blend from, from South African perspective between between managing the conditions and uh, having the ball in hand, one more try approach that sometimes sometimes happens uh, down south. Uh, we need uh, to. I think that the, with the, the way the pitches has developed and the roofs that clo- that's closed um, now and then, that the, the ball in hand um, approach from a lot of teams over the last couple of years. I think from the Joe Schmidt era. Especially these guys that, that brought something different to the game and it showed that it can, this side of the world can also be played not just uh, w- from a kicking perspective. So um, I think that it, if, I, if I talk South African rugby, we changed our style quite a bit um, dramatically into the in the World Cup where it was tournament competition where it was less ball and hand approach. So um, we will just have to find that balance from my perspective now in Europe. What is the well, how can we get that uh, that perfect blend between uh, um, the two ball in hand and field domination uh, of preterity domination components in the game? You touched on it there about a couple years. Five nations in the situation. Is that like this year bigger for Italy? Um, I think every year is big for Italy. Yeah, and how do you reflect on the 20 years? Yeah, fortunately, I've I spent quite a bit of that 20 years in Italy, so I've got a good perce- perception. I know how much it means for them. I think it's uh, um, there's a lot of determination, a lot of people um, in the rugby fraternity in, in in Italy that absolutely loves the way uh, love the way that the, uh, this tournament is presented, the way it's played, the the aura around it. Um, I know I was one of the big campaigners for us to become part of uh, the Celtic League or the Pro 12 back then and, and, and even when I played there in 2003-2004 back way back in the day it was really we pushed for it to become part of, of Celtic of, of the Celtic League back then so when it eventually happened and from my perspective since I've left Italy in 2013 um, until now, the Italian teams, the physicality and the rugby mindset has changed and grown a lot. A lot. I think there's a better, better perspective physically what's expected. Also, um, in the rugby intelligence, um, I think it, that, that really improved. And uh, also, I think it became um, um, the, 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 the younger generation now in Italy uh, starts to understand what is expected of them. They start at a much earlier age developing skill sets and physical ability to be competitive. So I think the influence of the Six Nations in the last 20 years and also of pro rugby in the last, the last four to five years will only be seen from now on. Okay, guys, thanks very much. Okay.